Welcome to Aggregate, an open source Python library for solving actuarial problems with aggregate probability distributions. This session will explain how to get started using the software. We're going to do that in Google Colab. I'm just here in a, a blank workbook. And the first thing we're going to need to do is install the software. And you do that using uh, pip. So I'll just pip install aggregate and it's gonna well for a little while there it's got to download the packages it needs to update uh, matplotlib as well and uh, so i'll just go through the rest of the agenda uh, we're going to cover using uh, the build object which is an instance of the underwriter class that kind of manages the whole process and it's really one-stop shop for aggregate. You can build any of the uh, objects that you want using uh, the build class. Uh, it has built in a number of examples. There's a, a data set called the knowledge. And we'll go through some examples of that and we'll show you the uh, typical output uh, that you get. All right, so it looks like it's completed here. We go down, we want to see uh, that we've got aggregate 11.3. And we've got a matplotlib after 3.5. And uh, we do need to restart the runtime before we can get going here. So the first step is just to, uh, from aggregate, uh, import build. Okay, and then we look at uh, what build is. Uh, the, the 21 shift reduce conflicts, you're always going to get that uh, message. Doesn't, uh, it's harmless. All right, so we look at build. Build is an instance, as I said, of the underwriter class. It's called Rory, after Rory Klein, who was this great underwriter I worked with in the um, late 1990s. He was a big fan of technical underwriting. Um, we're on version 11.3. The knowledge database has 136 programs in. And then the next few variables just explain a little bit about the internal workings. Not, not essential for us here now. Uh, so we go down to the bottom here. We've got some help. Uh, it suggests uh, that you look at the the knowledge database uh, to get some examples of uh, uh, aggregates that you can build. And the aggregates are all built in this language called DEC, DEC language, DECL, uh, which is short for the, from, I wanted it to be easy to go from the declaration page to a distribution, okay? And so you're gonna specify the exposure, uh, frequency, severity components, reinsurance, all that sort of thing in a, in a fairly easy to read format. And today we're going to concentrate on these first few examples here, which are just simple dice examples. These are good because you kind of know what the answer is and you can check and see uh, you're getting the uh, expected results. Um, so the next couple of things it suggests is you look at QShow and Show. QShow will just extract some programs out of here so we can look at them more uh, cleanly. So build QShow, and then it does a sort of pattern matching. It actually uses regular expressions on the name so if we just ask for everything um that's uh that's got the word dice in it we're going to get six examples here um and the the format of each of these programs is the same the ag at the beginning is a keyword it tells deck that we're going to try and build an aggregate distribution um the next string is a name so this is basically has the same sort of naming conventions as a, a variable upper and lower case it's case sensitive you can put uh, numbers on the end uh, you can also include a period colon or underscore or a tilde as a as a break and then we have two in this version two different clauses we have a frequency clause and a severity clause okay and this is specifying discrete outcomes for us uh, and as befits a roll of a dice right so it can be values one through six and you can imagine if you're building that as an aggregate, you can either say the frequency is one through six and the severity is one. That would be this first row here. Or you could say the frequency is always one and the severity can take values one through six. And that's the second form here. I should add, uh, you can add uh, a second uh, clause in here, which would be the probabilities if you didn't want them all to be equal. Um, so let's, uh, the next thing to, to look at is uh, actually, Let's have it build some of these guys. So if we just do show on uh, the, the same six things, it's going to whir away and it's going to build us and uh, do some graphics for um, all six of those 
uh, outcome. So let's just scroll up to the top here so we can look. Okay, so the first one here, this is our simple dice, and we're imagining uh, building it as frequency is the outcomes one through six claim counts, all equally likely, and severity is always just one unit. So that's going to be the role of the dice. Um, let's look, first of all, maybe at the pictures. Uh, so on the left here, we've got the probability mass functions. The orange is the severity, which is always just equal to one. And the blue is the aggregate distribution. And as expected, it's equally likely outcomes one through six. In the middle, we've got the distribution function, again, for the frequency and for the severity. So severity just jumps up to one at one. And the distribution of the aggregate is a step function uh, taking values with the, with the jumps at one, two, three, four, five, six. And then flipping that around, the inverse, we've got the quantile function. We'll come back to that uh, later on. Uh, above here, we've got a very important uh, display of uh, diagnostic information that allows us to look at the model and check that it's matching the expected mean coefficient of variation and skewness. This is to give you some sense that you've, you've actually created the right outcome uh, in, in the model. So in this case, the average of a roll of the dice is three and a half. So that's the expected uh, frequency. The average severity is just one and the aggregate is, is three and a half. So this first column here that's labeled E of X, that is the theoretically correct answer from the frequency severity specification that you provide. That will, all, that will always be computed for you. The next column, est E of X, is what aggregate computes using its fast Fourier transform uh, convolution algorithm. And in this case, you can see it's spot on, one and three and a half. Uh, we do show then the um, relative error, and you can see it's a machine noise uh, difference from, from the actual. Then we've got the coefficient of variation. Again, first we're going to show the actual coefficient of variation, theoretically, and then we're going to show numerically what was computed. And again, they're spot on, and then the same thing with the skewness. And then the last row down here is going to show us uh, some information about in internal computations. Uh, log 2 is 4, means we're going to use 2 to the power 4, which is 16 uh, buckets for the discretization. Um, and the bucket size, each individual bucket, is just going to be one unit wide. And then, most important, we get to this validation. Um, the program will look at a number of measures of whether the outcome distribution is reasonable or not. It's going to look at the absolute, um, sorry, the relative error for the frequency and the severity for the mean, the CV, and the skewness. And if they're all within a reasonable tolerance, uh, it will declare that the, the uh, model appears to be not unreasonable, which is the, the best you can do. This is kind of like a null hypothesis. You don't accept the null hypothesis, you just don't reject it. Uh, and we'll see later on some examples where this fails and it gives you uh, some different information. So this is a simple example. Um, the next version uh, just turns it around and says, okay, frequency is always one, severity is one through six. So now frequency is one, severity is three and a half. Uh, everything looks reasonable, but you do see a difference down here on the plot because the severity distribution and the aggregate are the same. So the orange and the blue lines uh, coincide. Uh, the next example we've got here is um, uh, the Two, the sum of the roll of two dice, okay? So uh, each outcome is one through six, and we're saying we always get two, two dice, so the frequency now is two, and the severity is still three and a half, so the aggregate mean is seven. Uh, we're still at machine error noise, um, so it's still not unreasonable. Um, down here we see the expected triangular distribution for the aggregate, uh, supported between 2 and 12 is the only non-zero values. In the middle, uh, you've got the step function in orange here for the severity, and then the blue line uh, for the aggregate, and then we've got the percentiles over to the right. Um, and we can keep going, right? We can do this one has got uh, the roll of five dice. Okay, so now we're getting a, a fairly normal looking uh, uh, distribution for the total of the roll of five dice. The severity here is still shown on the left. We've got the distribution function, and then we've got the percentiles on the right. And then uh, finally, this one's kind of my one of my favorites. I call this a, a dice roll of dice rolls. So the frequency is the roll of a dice. So one, two, three, four, five, six claims. And then the value or the loss from each claim also given by the roll of a dice. So the total outcome here can vary between uh, one if you roll one claim and it has value one, 
and 36 where you'd have to roll a six and then you'd have to roll uh, six sixes with the, the other dice that you roll. So here you see uh, expected frequency and severity three and a half. Expected aggregate is going to be three and a half squared, which is 12 and a quarter. Uh, again, the numerical method is, is matching that uh, exactly. And we can see the CV and the, the skewness here. And this is still coming out as not unreasonable. Now, you could do this uh, in a spreadsheet. It would be kind of tricky. Um, and certainly, I would make a mistake while I was doing that. So it's, it's sort of very convenient to be able to get this uh, here. Um, and the graph is, is sort of somewhat surprising. Uh, the smallest probability is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, and then it, you know, it drops down uh, after that because you, you have to uh, roll two dice. And, and then the chances of rolling seven from two dice is, is actually kind of smaller. Um, and then you've got your distribution function, again, severity and the aggregate and the quantile plot with percentiles. So the way you, you read this plot on the right is, so your 80th percentile, you would look to the value up here and it's sort of, you know, nearly 20. Your 90th percentile would be here sort of 20 and a bit and so forth. So that's just an introduction to uh, creating some frequency and severity aggregate distributions uh, from the knowledge. And uh, in the next video, we'll pick up building some more realistic insurance examples. Thank you.